Good morning all. I'm the pastor Tim Marvel and it is my pleasure to welcome you here to the sanctuary of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. Due to the COVID restrictions, we continue to worship, uh, not in exile, but out of the building. But we are so happy that you're able to join us here on our Facebook Live page. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's the Sunday after Pentecost when we celebrate the Trinitarian God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. This is a special day, and it is also a day that we find ourselves in very troubling times. We've never seen uh, so much strife and chaos as has existed in the last three months. So if there's ever a time we needed the Lord, we need it now, and I'm, happy, I'm pleased to say that for our musical accompaniment, we will have elements of our 7101 group uh, that will be here, and that will be uh, the title of their very special music that they'll be providing us with today. Um, if you're just joining us, you've found us on our Facebook Live page, our Facebook page, we encourage people to like that, and therefore, whenever we are do come live, you should get a notification if you're on Facebook. We also maintain a website, and that is www.allenparkpress.org. And from there, you should be able to find uh, links and email links and phone numbers to contact us if you should need anything. Um, just as a, another couple of announcements, uh, next Sunday, the 14th, although we can't be together, it would normally be our annual church picnic, but we're not canceling that. What we are doing is we're, we're rejiggering some things and we're gonna actually have a drive-through picnic. So starting at noon, uh, until 2 p.m. We have an alleyway that runs uh, parallel to Park Avenue, and we are telling people, come through, and we will have prepared hot dogs and potato chips, cookies, and we would uh, and have those bagged up safely, uh, and the deacons are providing that. There is a sign-up for that that you should have received in our constant contact emails, which if you're not getting, you can access through our website and request to be included on that. The only reason why we're asking people to give us an indication if they could come is simply so we can make sure that we have enough food for all. There won't be any Zoom coffee hour that day, but there is today, and so that information should have been available in the e-light um, that people received, and we would welcome you to join us following worship for an informal time of discussion and fellowship. Friends, as we get ready to worship God today, would you please pray with me? Holiness, word, power. You reveal yourself as one God in three persons, a mighty, creative, life-generating dancer who invites your creation to join you. Catch us up in your love and lead us into your world to call others to follow you with singing and rejoicing. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to worship, and please sit back, take a deep cleansing breath, let the spirit into your heart, and enjoy our prelude.
Thank you so much. That was our own Christine El Hajj with our prelude, and she will be accompanying our quartet from 7101 also throughout the day. As we prepare to worship, would you please join me in our call to worship? Mighty wind who danced over the deep and surveyed the shapeless void, dance over us now and ready us for your creative purpose. Divine word who commanded unruly chaos and called forth light and life, call to us now and open to us to a new expressions of grace. Eternal artist who formed us in your likeness and claimed us as kin, reform and refine us to be bearers of your blessing. Holy Trinity, Creator Christ Spirit, who gathered the primeval waters, gather us in, then send us out, our voices echoing creation's song, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Friends, our first hymn will be Holy, Holy, Holy. Thank uh, Richard Obert and Sue Ingersoll, Scott Johnson, and Andrea Carlson for being here to provide us with this very special vocal music today. Friends, as we prepare to worship, realize this, that creation displays the glory of God, but our sin, our disobedience to God, keeps us from rejoicing in the love that God reveals. Yet, Christ Jesus, the Son, carried our sins to the cross, and the Holy Spirit breathes new life into us so that we can gather today and praise God, who is our maker, our savior, and our life-giving lover. So let us confess our sins that we may be worthy of receiving such grace. 
Could you please join me in our prayer of confession? Presence, life, fire, God who is three in one, we confess that we have turned away from you. We gaze upon ourselves as if we are worthy of worship. We take your creation into our hands, not to love, but to use and then to discard. We go to the people of the land, not to serve, but to press them into our service. We do not deserve that you would even notice us, but we pray for mercy because you are merciful. Flame of love, purify us from sin. Eternal now, lead us to your truth. Risen one, baptize us into union with you. Transform us into faithful disciples who worship you alone. God, who is Trinity. Amen. And now, friends, in the silence of our own hearts, let us conf confess our own sins and trespasses. Amen. Friends, know this, the Holy One of Israel is the Redeemer of all the world, and the Holy Spirit, who comes as the breath of new life, forgives and forgets the sins of all who repent. So therefore, I declare to you that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. And now, as there is the tradition of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, we encourage you all now to virtually turn to each other and offer a sign of the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Peace to you. Amen. I can almost feel everybody's fingers tapping on the, te uh, on the keyboards and saying hello to everyone. Friends, uh, I would like to, I'd like to take a time, a moment right now, just to step back and to offer a time for the children that are with us and also among us. Today, you will hear the story of creation. It's in the first book of the Bible, which is called Genesis, which is the Hebrew for literally in the beginning. And we hear how in the beginning that the earth was a formless void. Now, what's that mean? It means that it was just nothing. It was there. And then out of that nothing and disorder, God created the world. First, forming the day and the night. And then forming the land and the waters. And then populating it with fish and plants and insects. And then... After he created animals, he created us, man and woman. And we hear that it takes six days to do that. And then on the seventh day, God says, let there be a Sabbath, a rest day. And that is where we gather on Sunday as that day of Sabbath. Now, I want to bring one thing to your attention. And that is, is when I was a kid, I always had this very favorite thing that I used to do. I'm sure it was taught to me by my mom and my grandmother, and it always said, if you can take your hands, you could always be the church, and said, look, if we put our hands together, we can say, this is the church, and this is the steeple. Open your hands and see all the people. Let's do that one more time. Take your hands and put your fingers together like that, Say, this is the church, and then the two forefingers, this is the steeple. And then turn them inside out, open the doors, and see all the people. God created people in his own image on the sixth day. Just one, one man and one woman. And from them, we are all descended. See, we're all the same. We're all God's children, created from the same being. And I know if you've been watching, that there's some times that are very troubling because there are some things and some people who don't have the same opportunities. Sometimes it's based on culture and sometimes it's based on race. But we all know that how people act sometimes out in that big wide world, that if they were in a church or a mosque 
or a temple. They say and do things that they would never do. So remember, now, we can't be together in church, but the church is us. The church exists everywhere. And if we need to remind ourselves by putting our hands together and doing this every once in a while, well, we pray that there'll be a better world in front of us. God bless you all. Friends, as we prepare to hear God's word for us today, would you please pray with me? Sing into our ears, O Spirit, the holy word of life. Tell us who we are and to whom we belong so that we may live with gratitude for all that you have done. Amen. Friends, our first reading is from Genesis. It's chapter 1 through chapter 2, verses 4. It is the story of the creation. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the, from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God said, it was good. And then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth every living creature of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals and the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he made them. Be fruitful. God blessed them and said, God to, said to them, be fruitful and multiply 
fill the, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, and everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. May God add his blessing to this, his holy word. Amen. Friends, our special music for today is If We Ever Needed the Lord. Sure do. 
need him now. That was. Thank you so much. And so true. Friends, our second scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5. Let us listen now for the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Friends, in the life of a preacher... Sometimes it doesn't pay to work too far ahead in what you're going to preach about. Karl Barth, a great Swiss theologian, always said that the best way to do theology, talk about God and understand God, was to have your Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. And if there ever was a week where that was true, it has to be this week. But this is also Trinity Sunday, and Trinity Sunday is this mysterious Godhead of three in one. And so we talk about that. How can it be that there are three separate people but of the same substance? And it's a mystery. And our faith depends on us leaning into that, that it might be beyond our comprehension how that works or how that can be. You see, it's in our faith because when we look back and we see, just as we read in Genesis, of the creation of what we see around us now in ourselves, that we believe that there is a divine being. There is someone who created. And then, pulling ourselves forward, looking back over just the last couple of months, if God created out of the chaos, boy, it just seems like we're back into it again, doesn't it? We've seen chaos as, disease, as a disease has struck the world and, and our nation, striking down well over 100,000 people in our own country alone. And then we saw chaos as, as hospitals had became overwhelmed in certain areas, including right here in our home area of Detroit and in other areas of the world and of the country. And then other hospitals in preparation, well, they shut down services that they depended upon in order so that they can continue to employ people. We've seen that chaos as businesses closed and people have lost their job. Never in our history has there ever been as many people that are out of work as there are right now. And here in the church we saw chaos as we had to close our doors. We had to figure out how can we be church without sitting in a big building together. But we figured it out. And now we find ourselves in another chaos. That as the death of yet another black person, a senseless death, one that didn't have to happen, has brought us over into many peaceful protests that talk about the existence of institutional and systematic racism in our own country. And then that itself has resulted in some violence and some rioting and some looting. To be honest, it, this chaos is just creating a lot of anger in all of us. Excuse me. Now this chaos that we've talked about, Chaos represents a complete disorder and confusion. Some of the synonyms that uh, Webster's tells us that we could use for it are disorder or disarray, disorganization, confusion, mayhem, bedlam, pandemonium, madness, 
havoc, turmoil, commotion, disruption, upheaval, furor. Boy, that's about right, isn't it? Very much what many of us have felt, most of us has felt, certainly over the last 75 days or so. But that chaos, that also brings us to the creation story that we just read. Now, let me start this off by saying that I don't come into the ministry as a first career, that I existed as a scientist before I became a minister. I spent a good number of years of my life chasing molecules as a biochemist and a chemical engineer. And one of the things that uh, I want to do today is I want to I want to step back, and I want to take you back to your high school physics class, right? Now, we probably lost about half the people right there saying, no, it's, it's easy. It's easy. One of the first things we learn about is thermodynamics, and that, that there are some physical laws of the universe that we say that they're the laws of thermodynamics. Now, the first one is energy, and energy is either created nor destroyed when we look at closed systems. It can transfer the way that it looks. It can transfer the way that it's used, but... You can't just create it, and you can't just destroy it. And then the second one, and that is, is that things will naturally progress from a highly ordered state into a disordered state. Chaos. That this stored energy can't remain stored, and that if there's nothing holding it together, things just go from stacked to spread out all over the place. Now, I know this is true. I know this is true from any child's bedroom. And I also know that it's true of most adult garages, mine included. And the only way that we can get to the change in that is that we have to stop what we're doing and add energy into the system to put things back again. Put things as they are so we can find things, we can be more productive, we can feel better about ourselves. All of those things require energy. And that's what God did in creation. God put energy into this disordered system and put it into this beautiful world that, we're, that we exist in. Now, it's a world with issues and problems. Not of God's making, but it's of our own making. You see, ultimately, God is creative. And having spent some time working and watching creative people, I'm amazed at it. We're all creative in some way, shape, or form. Perhaps the ones that's most visible are artistic people, that they look and they see ordinary things. And then they can take these things and put them together in ways that have never been done before. And we see the world in a different way be through that. And that's why we're here today celebrating the Trinity. Because this is the method that God used to create beautiful things. Now, the Trinity itself of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer, however we best can, can relate to that, we need to look into Genesis and we see that what God did is that Trinity was not something that just developed at the time of Christ. And people that were after him saying, well, how do we put these things together into a logical order? That we can look back at the scripture that we just read today and see that from the very beginning, the Godhead, three and one, existed from the very beginning. It says that God, God's spirit, God, the wind that blew over those waters, that Hebrew word for wind, it's the same as spirit. God's spirit blew over that disorder. And also, Jesus was right there too. It says, let us make mankind in our image. God was speaking in the plural. Now, if we might think that that is a, not, not something that we're quite sure about, well, I point you right to the Gospel of John that we read. And there, John makes it very clear that in the beginning was the Word. 
capital W, Word. That's Jesus. And that it was one with God. Now, there's no arguments about the Holy Spirit. We know that the Holy Spirit was present. It's talked about quite a bit throughout the Old Testament. And then we also can see the fact that when Jesus ascends into heaven, just as we celebrated last Sunday in Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit was gifted to us. That brings us to where we are right now. That newspaper that I talked about. Maybe the social media that we read. You see, we're struggling with equality. Let's remember that God created mankind as one. And if we declare ourselves Christians and we don't believe that and we don't live into that, well, folks, I think we're dishonoring God. We really are. And when we dishonor God, we're creating a trespass, a sin. Now, what I'd like to tell you if this, if this, is, this is the positive part of the whole sermon. This isn't the first time we've been through it. I'm 58 years old. I can remember 67 and 68 and the race riots. I can remember my parents and their friends and my grandparents talking about what was going on in a negative light. I also saw civil rights. I can, I can remember when there were assassinations. I can remember the assassination of Martin Luther King, who in his lifetime stood and said that the arc of history, the arc, that line, that it bends towards justice, and sometimes it takes a long, long time. And he led in peaceful protests that other people turned violent. And that he continued to preach just to say, stand the ground. And people were hurt. And people were killed. And you would think that with the passage of the Civil Rights Act that that was fine, but we're finding out that we have made changes, and some of them have been large, and some of them have been incremental, but we still culturally and institutionally don't provide the same opportunities for everyone. And it's not just on racial divides. It's on cultural and socioeconomic divides also. But I think I know how we get here. We get here back to that second law of thermodynamics. See, we need additional energy to put things as they should be, as God originally created them, as he wants us to continue to have them. And if all of our energy is being spent on simply surviving, on making sure that we have enough, well, then we have nothing left for that creative moment. It means we literally fall apart into disorder and chaos. It's just simply entropy, the second law of thermodynamics being obeyed. But you see, it doesn't have to be that way because we have the Holy Spirit. Last week, we got together here on Pentecost Sunday and we celebrated this Spirit of God who comes and activates us bringing new energy into the system so that things can be transformed into things that they had fallen into and are no longer reflective of what God intended. And that's where we as the church have to stand in hope and action and prayer that there will be a time when we are all equal that when people will not be treated differently by institutions, that we will honor all life and all lives. But in the meantime, let's not turn just a blind eye to what is actually and immediately in front of us. Now, I did something for the first time, well, no, the second time in my life. I went to a protest rally. 
Now, it was a protest simply saying that the existence of the way things that they are are not right. I wasn't there to be violent and no violence came. I said that this was my second rally. My first rally was back in junior high when they changed the flavors of the soft serve ice cream. So we did stand up as a uh, sixth and seventh and eighth grade class and said, we want strawberry back. We didn't get it. But near here we are. I was so enlivened by the people that I saw that peacefully were there but being very demanding that the facts of the matter remain forefront in everybody's mind. That the fact that all lives do matter, but right now, we need to concentrate on our, the people who are racially different than us. But they're the same. We need to stand against that injustice. We don't need to blame too much. And here's the thing that really excited me. When I looked around, very, very few people my age or older, all in their 20s and 30s, this is a generation of people that are ready to say, not going to be this way in the future. And boy, that made me smile. That made me regain hope that what we're going through now are terrible times. But we'll get through them. And we're going to be a better mankind and a better reflection of God's creation when we finish. God bless you all. Amen. Friends, what a special day that we have to be able to be together here and also to celebrate communion together. This is the Lord's table. These are elements of his creation that he created for us to be shared. And that by doing so, we celebrate not only God himself, but also our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This table is a reflection and a remembrance of what Christ told us to do, but it's also a participation in the very mysterious Holy Trinity. That as we gather around this table and we use this bread and this juice, that we are declaring our belief and our faith. That all the believers of all time are gathered around us, that this is just a portent of the heavenly banquet that awaits us when God's kingdom will come to rule. Oh, for the lack of COVID-19, when we could all be together and hand each other the cup and hand each other the bread. Maybe even not doing it in the sanctuary, but just going out in the streets and saying, we're all here. We're all one. We're all welcome. But we have this. We have this, and we pray that the Holy Spirit will be here who will transform us into the beings that we can never be on our own. Those beings that are reflections of God's will. Those beings who can go confidently out in the world knowing that the price has been paid, we've been redeemed in God's sight, and there's, always, there's only a wonderful future in front of us. And we do this because on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And then after taking the bread and offering a blessing, he broke it. And then looking at the disciples, he said, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And then, in a similar manner, after the supper, he took the cup. And he declared that this cup is the new covenant my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, when we take the cup and drink of the bread, we proclaim the saving death of Jesus Christ until he comes again. 
If you're at home, I encourage you at this time to take your host. Friends, this is the body of Christ, broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for our sins. Friends, let us pray. Heavenly Lord, our Father, our Creator, Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, let us know that as we gather here that we are in accord with God's command that we hold dominion over creation. So as we gather here, we pray for the church and for the world and all for whom we are called to be stewards of, saying, God of all goodness, hear our prayer. We do give you thanks, O God, for our world, which you made and renewed in the power of Jesus' resurrection. We pray you will make us wise and careful of your gifts as we live here on this earth. God of goodness, hear our prayer. We pray that the love which passes ceasingly between the Father and the unceasingly between the Father and the Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each and every believer and draw us all into your unending life. God of goodness, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of all churches, for the Protestants, the Roman Catholics, the Orthodox, for Sunday school children and youth for the elderly whose wise counsel is sorely needed in all ages, for the enlivenment of youth who can see a better world, and for all the ecumenical endeavors that seek to bring us closer to each other and to you. God of goodness, hear our prayer for earth and for all creatures and plants, for healthy water and air and soil, for policies and laws that regard our home and God's universe as a precious gift, God of goodness, hear our prayer for the people, for our families, our households, our communities, the people that we haven't met, that we all understand that we live life together, and that you may show us the importance of loving one another, and that in doing so that you strengthen us in your grace and your truth. God, of all goodness, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who suffer in any way, for those who struggle right now to pay rent or a mortgage, for those who have no job, for those who have no home, for those who feel neglected and abused in our communities, for people who long for family and instead are alone, for children who do not have a good guide to raise them up, and for whatever else you see that we need, Lord, provide us. God of goodness, hear our prayer for all those needs that are still unnamed, but placed before you now in the silence of our own hearts. God of all goodness, hear our prayer it is into your hands that we entrust all that is of a concern to us this day. Sure that you hear our pleas, that you are a living and a loving God and present in this world, grateful that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray this in the name of the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray in the way that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our final hymn will be We Shall Overcome. Amen. Friends, as we come to the end of this service, I will always say this. We thank you so much for being here to celebrate God, to worship God, and to be strengthened as we gather together here. And if you are a member or an affiliate of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church, we, of course, encourage you to continue with your stewardship of this ministry and there should be a, a multitude of ways that are being identified in the Facebook Live comments that you can do that electronically in safe manners. If you're visiting with us today, or you are worshiping with us because your church isn't currently meeting and doesn't have an online presence, we are not asking for you to provide. But we would ask that you remember your own church in your giving. It is a time when many churches are in a difficult time financially. I want to share one other story with you before we go. 
You see, I grew up in a town in northwestern New Jersey where there was no but, nothing but white people. There actually had been, until the 1950s and early 1960s, there had been deed restrictions that prevented who could buy what houses. And I didn't know about it because I was a youth. It was just the way it was. We were, we were all the same. And then I got to college. And I did go to a college that was still heavily, heavily white, but also had a significant minority presence. And while I was there, I met, well, I met a friend by the name of Jonathan. And Jonathan and I pledged the same fraternity, and Jonathan was black. And I can remember that one night we were walking, and this was in Providence, Rhode Island, and I had stepped into a convenience store to purchase something. It was late at night. And when I came out, there was three police officers surrounding Jonathan. And they were interrogating him as to why he was there and what he was doing. I stepped forward. I said, what's the matter here? And I was brusquely told to step aside, that it wasn't my matter. And I go, oh, he's my friend. We were here together. And he said, well, what were you doing? Now, they did let us on our way, but then I quickly realized that the reason why they had stopped him was because of his race. And that bothered me. And I remember asking Jonathan, I am so sorry that that happened. And he looked at me and he goes, Tim, it's just part of being black in America. Now, that was in 1982. It's my own personal story. It's my own personal experience. It's formative to me, and I'm sure that other people, you all have your own stories. But if I could ask you this week, look back on your lives. Look back at similar things. Remember. Let the injustice brew within you. Let you know that by not stepping forward, by not offering support, by being silent, we're just being part of the problem. And the Holy Spirit and God's will encourage us to be part of the solution. So as we go forth today, go out into this bright and beautiful creation of the world that God has given us and celebrate it. Celebrate it by being a child of God to live the abundant life and to share that with all. And go forth firmly in the knowledge of the love of God, the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Be blessed.